Good afternoon, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We're going to continue in our book reading, Revelation Timeline Decoded, by David N. Wilcoxon. We are in chapter 22, and it is entitled, The First Trumpet Judgment, 395 to 410 A.D. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Revelation chapter 8 verse 7. The first trumpet represents the Goths' invasion from 395 to 410, led by Alaric. The Bible defines hail as symbolic of war. Have you entered the treasury of snow? Or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? Job chapter 38, verses 22 through 23. This symbolism is used of King of Assyria and his army who were sent against the house of Israel. Behold, The Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 2. Fierce Gothic tribes have been at war with the Romans along the northern frontier for many years, but they were restrained by the Roman military leader Theodosius. But when he died in 395, the northern cloud of warriors who had so long been gathering discharged itself with fury upon the Roman Empire. The barriers of the Danube were thrown open as the uncommon severity of the winter allowed them to roll their large wagons over the broad and icy back of the river. The Goths moved south in the direction in which literal hail came and attacked the Roman Empire in Greece, Gaul, Spain, and then 300,000 Goths invaded Italy. The fire represents their scorched earth policy in their invasions of enemy territory as they burned everything in their path and there was much blood being poured out. Thus did the first great storm of hail lay waste the Roman Empire. Alaric confirmed that Yah sent him to attack the Romans when he said, It is not of my own will that I do this. There is one, capital O, who forces me on and will not let me rest, bidding me spoil Rome. Edward Gibbon documented the frontiers of Gaul had enjoyed for many years a state of quiet and prosperity, but the consuming flames of war spread from the banks of the Rhine over the greatest part of the seventeen provinces of Gaul. The scene of peace and plenty was suddenly changed into a desert, and the prospect of the smoking ruins could alone distinguish the solitude of nature from the desolation of man. At the hour of midnight, the Salarian gate was silently opened, and the inhabitants were awakened by the tremendous sound of the Gothic trumpets. They fired the adjacent houses to guide their march and to distract the attention of the citizens. The flames, which encountered no obstacle in the disorder of the night, consumed many private and public buildings. This awful catastrophe of Rome filled the astonished empire with grief and terror. 1163 years after the foundation of Rome, the imperial city, which had subdued and civilized so considerable a part of mankind, was delivered to the licentious fury of the tribes of Germany and Scythia. Scythia. The Roman Empire killed the saints for their witness. They were burned at the stake, fed to lions, and their blood was shed. Now the barbarians were sent against the Romans, spilling their blood and burning everything in their path. In the Ecclesiastical History 425, 
Philos Doragius documented the sword of the barbarians carried off large multitudes and pestilence and famine pressed upon them at the same time together with large herds of wild beasts hail too fell in many places bigger than a stone which could fill the hand it was found in some parts of such size that it weighed no less than eight pounds most clearly revealing the angry of god the anger of god in the fall of rome mike dugan uses weather terms to describe alaric and his army far into the dark frontier an unrepairable reign of destruction was about to befall the roman world the visigoths were temporarily pacified by emperor theodosius who granted them more land in northern greece after the death of theodosius the visigoths were on the move like a thunderstorm led by alaric the visigoths researched the imperial city uncontested in 410 for the first time in over a millennium barbarian hordes stormed into the eternal city wow in the last prophecy edward bishop elliot says and then the first trumpet sounds Alaric course was to Italy. He, as he said himself, he felt a secret impulse that impelled him to the gates of Rome. Thrice did he descend from the Alps, marking each step of his course with conflagration and blood, till the city was open to the conqueror and the Gothic fires ablaze around the capital. Meanwhile, Radagaeus with 300,000 vandals from the Baltic broke like a dark thunder cloud as Gibeon writes it on the Italian valleys over the greatest part of the 17 provinces of Gaul the scene of peace and plenty was suddenly changed into a desert and the prospect of the smoking ruins could alone distinguish the solitude of nature from the desolation of man the consuming flames of war spread from the banks of the Rhine over the greatest part of the 17 provinces of Gaul. The scene of plenty was suddenly changed into a desert. How amazing is the exact fulfillment of our Messiah's prophecy. He heard the saints' cries and prayers and carried out vengeance against the enemies of his saints. The Vision of the Ages, 1881 barton johnson says there is one expression that i have not yet noticed which occurs several times in the book of revelation and about which there was there has been a considerable discussion under the first of the trumpet angels one third part of the trees was burned up and all green grass as we have already found that the earth meant by john in the roman empire this would imply that one-third of that empire was particularly scourged. When the second angel sounds, verses 8 and 9, the third part of the sea became blood, a third part of the creatures in the sea died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. When the third angel, verses 10 and 12, sounded, a burning star fell from a third part of the rivers, and a third part of the waters became wormwood. When the fourth angel sounded, verse 12, a third part of the sun and or the moon and stars were smitten. If the reader will observe the reading closely, he will see that these four third parts described may all refer to the same third of the Roman world. The first third refers to the scourging of one third of the land, the second to one third of the sea, the third to one third of the rivers and the fourth to one-third of the heavens above. All combined, land, sea, rivers, and sky, would imply the scourging of one-third part of the world. Let it be noted, particularly, that these need, be, need not be in different quarters of the earth, but all together, and that the first four of the trumpet angels may unitedly scourge the land, sea, rivers, and heaven of one-third of the earth which was present to the mind of the prophet or one-third of the roman empire the first four angels desolate western europe 
the Latin portion of the earth and the Mediterranean Sea and other put <clears throat> and together put an end to the Western Roman Empire. The fifth angel lets loose the Saracen invasion, which scourges and conquers the Saracen third of the world with the blast of the sixth angel. The Euphratian horsemen are loosened to pour their morads on the Greek world of the of the Greek third of the world to overthrow it and to establish the Turkish Empire upon its ruins. The book paraphrase of the revelation of St. John according to E. B. Eliot 1862 says the first four were to reveal under successive emblems the fearful desolations which God would bring by the God by the Goths and those who followed them upon a third part of the land and the sea and the rivers that is upon the land and the sea and the rivers of the Western Empire which was one of the three parts into which the Empire at large was divided in the days of Constantine the Eastern Empire and the Illyrian of central of the three divisions being as yet spared from the desolating judgments which were to visit to the west. The Roman Empire is the area of the first four trumpet judgments. Alaric and the Goths devastated the land with their scorched earth policy. Next comes attacks on its coastlands. And that completes chapter 22. Next time we'll pick up in chapter 23, brothers and sisters. There goes the dogs. Perfect timing. I love you all. Keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book, which is the Word of God, and embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts, so you will not sin against God or be deceived. I love you all. Bye-bye.